good afternoon. My name is Martin Ždila. I work at Map Tyler. I love maps since my childhood, and I'm a big uh, OpenStreetMap contrib contributor for more than 10 years. Uh, today, I will talk about MapLibre GL, what's new in version 2, most notably about 3D terrain support. And I will also show you how to integrate MapLibre uh, library with various uh, frameworks like React, Svelte, Vue, or Angular. So let's start with, uh, sorry, with what's new in MapLibre version 2. So the big change is that the library was rewritten to TypeScript, which uh, I will explain later. Uh, the big feature, but still a uh, little bit experimental, is 3D terrain support. Uh, they dropped support of old browsers like Internet Explorer, it's the same as for open layers, and also they don't support uh, Chrome older than 66, which, is, which was released like four years ago. They drop uh, Mapbox specific features like the Mapbox URL and some uh, base URL and some uh, uh, access tokens settings. So now the library is, uh, has nothing uh, which is Mapbox pure specific. They added options to set a custom pix pixel ratio. Uh, you can use it if you want, for example, print your map in good quality because it requires higher DPI than uh, the screen. Then I added the uh, map reader function. This is useful if you want to integrate uh, map library with uh, other JavaScript map libraries like open layers. Uh, then they increased max, max pitch from 60 to 85. And this is very useful if you display uh, 3D terrain and want to see, for example, hills on the horizon then you need to tilt the map a little more. So this, uh, options, this option enables you to do it. Then they added uh, icon overlap and text overlap symbol layout properties. And they deprecated the all allow, icon allow overlap and text allow or overlap. And they extended it with a cooperative mode. So if the, some symbol is rendered with cooperative mode, and you render another symbol of which, which collides with this symbol uh, later, then in, it won't be rendered if it has uh, this value set to known, but it will be rendered if it's set to always or to cooperative. Uh, then they added options <coughs> viewport glyph to the text rotation alignment. I will, I will demo it uh, soon. Then they added asymmetric padding uh, to icon padding property, so uh, every symbol or the icon can have different padding on every side. It's styled similar to uh, CSS padding uh, property. Then they added cooperative gestures options. I will demo it shortly. And they fixed many bugs, mostly thanks to uh, rewrite to TypeScript. So this demo shows the cooperative gestures option. Uh, let me start it. No. Okay, so this is a video, and you can see if I use the scroll wheel and I scroll the page, uh, the map will scroll until I click Control P and then I can zoom in and zoom out. And this other part of the video shows the, the text rotation alignment viewport uh, glyph property. And uh, you can see on the map, I'll play it again. Okay, this is this cooperation, cooperative gesture options. And now if I rotate the map, you see that every glyph of this map teller text, which is placed on the line, aligns with the viewport. Uh, 
Now I will talk about uh, rewriting uh, the library to TypeScript. So now there is no need to use external uh, npm library type slash my, my labor dash gl and you also will have always uh, all the types in sync with the library if they release a new version and it has all this benefit of auto completion and uh, controlling types of, of your code uh, it also improved improved the code quality so they thanks to the typescript they found some bugs and fixed fix it fix them and it also makes contribution easier for new developers because of this typing Uh, now about 3D terrain. 3D terrain adds uh, 3D functionality, so the maps are no more flat, but you can visualize the, the hills, the, the elevations, the volleys and, and, at the Serata. Uh, in this screenshot you can see three images. Uh, you can apply this 3D terrain on all, all kind of maps supported by MapLiber, so it means on raster maps and also on vector maps. In the first picture, you see the simple gray shading with 3D terrain support. On the other picture, you see the aerial map or satellite map, also with the 3D terrain support. And the third map is uh, map tailor outdoor uh, map, also with 3D terrain. You can see, or you can, for example, check these hiking trails if they are going too steep to, to uphill, so you, you can, for example, decide if you take the, the trip or not. Now how to add this 3D terrain functionality? So you may include uh, the source terrain directly to your style or add it separately, like, like you see in this code. So you add a source, uh, name it, you must specify the type, it's raster-dem, and then you provide either URL to uh, to tell JSON file, or you specify all the details directly, and uh, Mabliber supports uh, terrarium tiles for elevation data, or uh, terrain RGB uh, tiles, which are from my box. <coughs> um, these tiles are, are ba basically PNG files where the elevation is encoded uh, to these RGB channels for. Each, pixels, each pixel represents the, this elevation on, on the tile. Okay, and so if you set the source terrain, then you can call the map dosh, dot set terrain. When you specify this source, and you can also specify the offset and exaggeration. And this exaggeration means how these elevations should be boosted. So if you are rendering some uh, some land which don't have much hills, and but you want to see some some 3D uh, relief or 3D uh, terrain, then you can increase or boost it with this value. So this default is one. Uh, for my my purpose for the demo, which will be at the end, uh, I used MapTiler Cloud, where there are, are many existing standard tiles. Uh, which for this demo are interesting, like contours, hill shading, uh, outdoor map, or satellite map. Uh, it also contains uh, global terrain RGB data. This can be used for this 3D modeling. But in my demo, I uh, wanted to uh, take it to the limit and test how how details, how, how much detail can this library show. So I generated uh, high resolution data from LIDAR data. It includes high, res high resolution contours, high resolution hill shading, and high resolution terrain. So after I generated, I uploaded it to MapTeller Cloud and I could easily then include it to, to the code. This is the screenshot of the sample application. You can find it, find it on labs.maptailer.com slash samples. There are multiple samples and one of them is, is about this 3D terrain. 
the demo will be shown at the end because it's longer video and I'm not sure if it will make it complete. And now I will talk about integrating Mablibre with uh, various JavaScript frameworks, uh, namely with React, Svelte, Vue and Angular. You can find many uh, documentations and examples on docs.maptailor.com slash mablibre.gl.js. And there are many uh, examples on this page like get started and about basics, display marker, geojson layer, rasters, and so on and so on, geocoding. So let's start with uh, integrating Mablibre with React. Um, I recommend us to use a library named react-map-gl which uh, brings reactive API of Mablibre because uh, Mablibre is uh, on its nature uh, imperative, has imperative API, but with React we are used to reactive API. So this library brings it for you and it defines many elements with many properties which uh, makes you mostly not need to interact with uh, Mablibre API directly but you will use this, uh, just these React elements. And in this demo, you see you have to import the map from the React map-gl, and you need to import map library, library library because this library supports also map box. So if you want to use map library, you have to import it and specify it to map lib attributes. And then you specify the style which should be used. In this case, uh, we are using nice street styles from MapTiler. Uh, you specify the initial view state, so which part of the map would you like to see. And I also including uh, showing a marker at some position and some color. You can of, of course uh, use Mablibr with React without using this library, but then you need to handle all this uh, low level binding on your own. Similar integra integration goes with uh, Svelte. There also exists a library, but it's much simpler. It provides you only a map component. It doesn't currently, even it doesn't have a marker component. But you can bind the map uh, to Svelte variable and then use Mablibre API to add this marker or other features. Next library is uh, View. <coughs> it's also similar as with React or as with Svelte. It brings its own markup when you specify for, for the map style, some initial posi position. In this example, you can see there is a uh, element that tells us that we want navigation at some top right position and also marker on some coordinates. coordinates. And for every of these examples you can find again tutorials and demos uh, directly on docsmapteller.com and uh, we inc include uh, samples which uses these libraries for every framework but also uh, how to use it without without this library? So with accessing this, uh, with accessing Mablibre API directly. And now, uh, how to integrate Mablibre with Angular? Uh, this library is also uh, pretty comprehensive, like React One. So it contains many elements, which uh, basically. Uh, copies the map libre API. So you define everything declaratively and the same the style, zoom, center for the map, you add the control marker and you can also, there are also elements for layers. You can see it here for layers, for various sources like GeoJSON, Canvas, images and so on. Marker pop-up and various elements. Let's 
So this is how it will look like if you check the documentation on MapTyler. We have their working samples. And uh, at the end, I created the demo. I couldn't present this application live because of this restriction, so I created a video. <clears throat> And uh, it will show you how it looks in the wild. Uh, I need to play it. Okay, let's play it. So this map using, uses uh, raster hill shading with the terrarium RGB elevation data. Uh, this this place is a uh, Slovak karst in Slovakia. So you can see all these holes made by water. This is a uh, Plesivets quarry. And you can see how, the, how it quickly loads the tile. It was not preloaded. This is uh, Zadiel Canyon. I'm from Slovakia, so all these places are nearby my <coughs> where I live. This is Palcmanska Masha. This is ruins of Muran Castle. And all these tiles are serv served from uh, the cloud. This is the highest peak of Carpathian mountain range called Gerlach in High Tatras. There are uh, still some glitches in this uh, terrain elevation. For example, if, if you see the transitions from place to place, that it, it's not that smooth. But they are all reported and developers are working on it. And now you see the same, but with aerial imagery. So it looks like if you are watching the land from the plane. And see all the details. It's of course possible, as I mentioned, to use existing map tiler uh, <coughs> maps included to create a similar demo. They are currently not as uh, of, of as this high resolution, but you can still create impressive results. And they will be even more performant because for this high resolution, you it requires uh, higher bandwidth and stronger CPU and uh, graphic art. And this opens many opportunities. For example, if you if you load some if you if you track your trip somewhere to hills and then you can uh, create an application which will show you how did you progress during the trip the animation. There are existing applications for it and now you can create your own with your own customizations. You can hide that trust. And now I uh, will switch to map, map tiler uh, outdoor map when you can see uh, hiking trails in high Tatras and peaks and other points of interest. But uh, it's, it's, this is a vector map, so it's uh, more CPU. It requires much more CPU, and therefore, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Thank you. OK, so time for questions. <laughs> Thank you.